Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, good morning, Mrs. Fafa. Mrs. Fafa is here. Let's start. Uh, good morning, Mrs. Seema. Thank you for your invitation. You're most welcome, Mrs. Fafa, Ms. Hiba, and all the other girls and mothers who are with us today. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, let's start our grade 9 B science activity. This is the invitation which was sent to the mothers yesterday. Let's start with a verse from the Quran. Let's start with the objective of the science activity, which is to uh, inspire our students to take up studies and careers in the disciplines of science and technology. Whereas the aim of the science activity week is to uh, show our students what is possible through science and the exciting careers and opportunities that these disciplines can present to them. So let's start with uh, Shahad al Reski, inshallah. And she will be doing a beauty test. Uh, the objective is to check the presence of proteins in the food by conducting this beauty test. And the activity is Shahad has actually conducted the, the uh, beauty test herself, and she's going to present it now uh, by sharing her screen, inshallah. Shahad, I made you the presenter. You may start. Okay, miss, thank you. You're most welcome, sweetie. Can you see my screen, Mas? Yes, I can see the screen. Okay, Please good. put it on view, viewer mode, yes. Okay. Uh, Bismillah. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, everyone. My name is Shahid al and today I will be showing you my attempt in conducting the uh, Bayra test. So I first want to kind of go through what the Bayra test very quickly uh, so you can have a little understanding of what I'm doing in the, in the next couple of slides. So the Bayra test is a chemical test which is used for detecting the presence of peptide bonds in which so many people would use it to check whether proteins are present in a solution or not. Uh, and it's also known as the Piotrowski's test. Now, there, there are certain things that you have to know before uh, watching the experiment, one of which you have to know the, the, uh, the structure of the protein molecule. So as we all know, you and I both know, and that the protein uh, contains, is, this protein structure is, is con it contains a long chain of amino acids bonded together. Now, the bonds that create these, that, that attach both amino acids together is known as the peptide bond. Uh, and this is what the uh, Virat reagent is going to be detecting uh, when in the experiment. Now, some protein-rich foods that we uh, that that can be tested uh, is eggs, low-fat cheese, yogurt, milk, as well as meat, chicken, uh, tuna. All of these are very high in protein. Okay, now we want to go back to the origin of the Bira test. One last thing before I uh, I explain. Uh, so the the, the Bira test was first started or was first uh, conducted by this man uh, Gustav Heinrich Weidmann, in which he submitted his research in 1847 for his doctoral dis dis dissertation. Okay, so without further ado, I will begin with the uh, with my presentation now. The first thing, the first thing I, I, I kind of want to tell you what's going on in the video right now. The first, when we start off from the left, uh, the, 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 the yellow substance in this bowl is egg, which is going to be our protein sample for this experiment. Mm -hmm. And then in my hand, I have a beaker, which is going to be where all of the magic occurs. Uh, and then we have the bowl, which is going to be holding the burette uh, regent. And then we have a syringe, which is, which is very, very important when we're conducting these types of experiments, because you need very accurate measurements. I have uh, two beakers, which are going to be for uh, the burette reagent as well, and a, a, a cup of uh, just Sorry, distilled water, which is going to help us with uh, with sanitizing and cleaning up the uh, syringe. Okay. So. So now I'm I'm simply pouring some of the burette reagent into the uh, into the beaker, so it could be easier for me to 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 take it through the uh, syringe. Okay. Yes. 
Uh, and then I'm going to, since this is this, this syringe that I'm currently using is a clean sanitized syringe. I made sure to clean it before. Uh, and this is the egg. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you a close up. Yes. This is going to be our protein sample. Yeah. And then I will use the syringe and I will take exactly two centimeters cubed of the, uh, of my, of my protein sample and I'll be discharging it into the empty beaker. Again, I'm giving you a close up to the, uh, to the syringe. All right. And then you dispose of it inside this, this empty beaker that uh -huh. I was holding earlier. And then you're going to notice me, uh, Again, this I'm giving you a close up, and then you're going to be noticing that I will be cleaning the uh, and sanitizing the syringe uh, in this distilled water in the cup of, in the glass of water that I have on the side. Now, this is very important because uh, when you're when you're dealing with these types of experiments, you want to make sure that all of the residues from the past or from the previous uh, intake that you've taken uh, is is no longer there, and you want it to be completely pure. Uh, so again, that's very important, as well as not having any air bubbles inside the syringe to avoid any inaccuracies in your results. So uh, that's the first step. I took, again, I took two centimeters cubed of the food sample and I placed it in the beaker. Now the next step, mm -hmm. after I cleaned my, my, my syringe, I made sure to, to place it in a bowl in which I took exactly, again, two centimeters cubed, not more, not less, because uh, there has to be a balanced ratio or an equal ratio of the egg sample and of the burette reagent, okay? So it could actually pan out uh, smoothly. Okay, so we're, I'm simply taking in the, uh, the, the burette reagent mm -hmm. using the syringe, and I'm going to be placing it in, the, in this speaker uh, which contains my egg, uh, which contains my egg uh, solution. Now, just as a, a little more, 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 more information, the burette reagent actually consists a number of, of, of um, compounds or elements uh, combined together, including sodium hydroxide, hydrated copper sulfate, and potassium sodium tartrate. And they all combine together to create the, uh, the reagent that we all know. Yes. Now, third step, after I'm, I'm done mixing the egg solution and the burette reagent, I am, you have to mix it very, very thoroughly. And at the moment, it's blue, but uh, in a couple of minutes, it will turn purple uh, since they're very small amounts. So you mix it. And then for me, I had a result of this. Now, since you and I, again, both know that uh, the eggs, they are high in protein. So it is a positive test. It has to be a positive test. So it will change from blue to purple always. It will always change into purple if it's a positive test. And then, but if protein is not present, uh, it's going to give us a negative test, which will stay blue and the, ch the color will not take place. Now, one more thing I want to mention is that the, uh, the intensity of the color is directly proportional to, uh, to the number of peptide bonds in your solution, meaning that the darker the color, the more the larger number of peptide bonds there are. Uh, so just keep that in mind whenever you're trying to, uh, whenever you're conducting or you're thinking about conducting this experiment. Uh, well, this was my uh, attempt, very messy attempt uh, in conducting this experiment. I hope you enjoyed, maybe learned something. Uh, and yes, thank you. Yes, we did. Thank you so much, Shahid. That was very informative. And yes, we will keep in mind, inshallah, whenever we are doing this test in future, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. Uh, uh, Ms. Seema. Yes, Ms. Mufa. I just would like to thank Shahid. It's, uh, the information is very good for to know. And thank you so much, uh, Shahid. Uh, very proud of you. You have, Mushrat Barakallah, self-confidence for the way you are presenting your uh, your project. Excellent, Habib. Thank you very much, Masmas. Thank, thank you, you thank so you. Much. Thank you, Shahid. Very well presented and very informative. Thank you, thank you. May Allah bless you. Thank you, Ms. Sabah. Now let's move on to the next girl now. Can, uh, are you able to view my screen? Yes, Ms. Sim. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Sabah. Okay. 
After Shahad, we have Maryam Nada presenting her activity, which is on osmosis and diffusion. The objective is to explain the process of osmosis and diffusion in detail, and the activity is uh, Maryam made a video, which I'm going to present right now. Is the audio clear? Yes, yes, same. Thank you so much. Mariam, would you like to explain it along with the uh, video on display? Yes, sure, Miss. Yeah, please start. Okay. Today's topic is diffusion and osmosis. First, we're going to start by the definition of diffusion. Diffusion is just spreading out of particles. What affects diffusion? Many stuff affect diffusion, such as molecular mass, temperature, density, and much more. What is osmosis? Osmosis is the movement of particles. What is osmosis? Osmosis is, is the movement of particles across semi-permeable membrane from an area of lower concentration to an area of higher concentration, which is basically against the concentration gradient. So first, I conducted this activity, which I have dyes of the same concentration in two containers, one containing cold water and one containing hot water. As you can see, the hot water diffuses dye faster because hot water has particles which move faster with greater energy, while the cold water took a little while to achieve the same result, and in the end, I had to stir it to achieve the same result. second one, I laid out some skittles and poured a little bit of water to show you the effect of diffusion. In this case, the skittles contain a high concentration of dye, where water contains little to no color concentration in it. As you can see, the color slowly starts to diffuse from the skittles into the water, making this rainbow. how it looked in the end. Examples of diffusion and osmosis in everyday life. Everyone tried spraying perfumes or air fresheners, but have you ever wondered how the scent eventually comes to your nose? Well, this is done by diffusion. Osmosis is also responsible for how Roots absorb water into the cells, uh, into the plant, maybe. And cells uh, be healthy. So Thank you for watching. Thank you so much, Mariam. That was very well explained about the process of osmosis and diffusion, which was quite clear. Uh, Miss Sima, if you don't mind, just to interrupt. Thank you so much, Mariam Habibji. Excellent. Well done. Very proud of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mariam. I even love the skittles and the rainbow. The colors are so nice and very attractive, by the way. Thank you so much. Very well presented. Okay. Thank you so much. Now let's move on to our next presenter, who is Lujain al Tagafi, who is going to present a science, uh, present a science activity on cell organelles. The objective is to learn the structure and function of various organelles in an animal cell. And uh, the activity is making a video on the uh, cell organelles, which I'm going to play right now. Assalamu alaikum. Hi everybody. Today I will be talking about the cell organelles of the plant cells presented by Lujain al thaqafi 9b. In this video, we will be talking about what is cell organelles, type of plants are, their structure and also their function. 
cell membrane, cell wall, chloroplast, gulp approaches, cytoplasm, mitochondria, and also a nucleus. Cell was first discovered by the scientist Rupert Hawke in 1665. He was the first scientist who knew about cells and discovered the cell in the day 1665. What is cell organs? It is a cell structural structure and function of units of life. It is the cell basic unit that's capable of the performing of the life function. Cell membrane. It's also known as an also called an plasma membrane. It is an abiologic membrane which used to separate the interior of cells. It is also flexible and allow unicell organism to move its function to keep the intact and protect the barrier. Cell wall. It is the outer cover of the plant cell with a major role which protects the plant and give it a shape. It's made up from two layers, the middle lamella and also the primary cell. It's used to provide the cells with a mechanical protection, holding the cells from any danger. The first picture, it is the two types it's made from two layers, like you see, middle lamella and the primary wall, and the secretary of cell wall. Chloroplast. Chloroplasts are organelles that conduct photosynthesis, where the photosynthesis pigment chlorophyll capture the energy from sunlight and store it in energy storage molecule ATP while feeding oxygen from H2O in the plants and algal cells. The ATP is known as Edison triphosphates. Glogo apertus. They are a complex membrane power cell organelles found in cytoplasm of an eukaryotic cells. They are next, next uh, to endoplasmic reticulum near to the nucleus. They are cleaning a protein molecule to oligosaccharides chain and also attaching of sugar moieties of defense side chain to protein elements to protein elements cytoplasm it is an gel like matrix lying just below the cell membrane housing most of the cell organelles it's made up from water enzymes salt organelles and various of organic molecules Mitochondria. Mitochondria are also known as a chondrosome. It's a power generating organelles of a cell. Hence, they are co uh, commonly known as the power house of the cell. It converts the stored nutrient by help of oxygen to produce an energy in form of ATP. These are two simple pictures of mitochondria. Now, last thing we'll be talking about nucleus. It is the information center of the cell. Specialized complex organelles, primary function, store of the cell genetic information. It is the process of a nuclear membrane. It includes the nucleus and the content of the cytoplasm organelles. The last thing, a letter to the cell. Our body is made of cells. These cells love to be appreciated. Thank them as often as you can in the day for walking so hard. Keep them healthy and alive. Thank you for listening. Have a good day. Thank you so much, Lujain. That was very well presented. Yes, uh, very well presented. I like very much, Jane, your PowerPoint. It's very professional. Thank you so much, Habibti. Good luck. Very proud of you. Marra, marra, Thank you. Thank you, Miss. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Very nice PowerPoint. Thank you so much, Mrs. Wafa. Uh, next, we have uh, Laila, who is going to uh, present a presentation on osmosis and diffusion. The objective is to explain the process of osmosis and diffusion. And the activity was uh, making a PPT, which I'm going to present now. Yes, Laila, would you like to explain? Yes, sure. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Laila. Today, I'm going to be presenting about the movement in and out of the cells, which is diffusion, osmosis, and the active transport. So this is what I'm going to be talking about today. So first of all, we're going to begin with diffusion. 
diffusion is the movement of particles from higher concentration to lower concentration down the concentration gradient as a result of the random movement. And also diffusion um, has the random movement of particles and their kinetic energy, which allows diffusion to occur. Yeah, Leila, would you like to explain about the diffusion uh, one from here or shall I move on here, regular diffusion? You can move on. All right. Just tell me where to stop, please. Uh, we have the diffusion, we have kinds of diffusion, we have osmosis, the regular diffusion, facilitated diffusion and active transport. Um, about the uh, regular diffusion. Regular diffusion is the diffusion with no energy and no proteins. Uh, it's the movement of energy uh, of uh, molecules from higher concentration to lower concentration. The facilitated diffusion is the movement of molecules of high concentration to low concentration with proteins but no energy. Mm -hmm. Then we have uh, the active transport. Uh, the active transport is the movement of particles through a cell membrane from a region of their lower concentration to region of higher concentration using energy. The active transport is used in cases where diffusions or osmosis cannot be re relied upon. For example, what if a cell wanted to absorb extra nutrients from outside the cell? Despite having higher concentration of those nutrients inside the cell, diffusion won't work because the concentration gradient going the opposite way. Mm -hmm. um, next, we have osmosis. Osmosis um, is the net movement of water molecules from a region of high water potential, which is dilute solution, to lower water potential, which is concentrated solution, to a partially permeable membrane. Think of osmosis as the diffusion of water across a partially permeable membrane. When we're talking about water, we cannot use the term concentration anymore because a concentration denotes the amount of substance dissolving in water. So we have in osmosis, we have two kinds of solutions, the hypertonic solution and the hypotonic solution. The hypertonic solution, which there is um, low solubility and high water potential. Mm -hmm. And then the hypertonic, which is high solute and low water potential. Thank you so much, uh, Laila. That was very well explained about the process of diffusion and osmosis. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Laila. Um, Ms. Seema, I just want to ask you, it's for Laila, it was supposed to be for everyone. Laila, what did you benefit from doing this uh, PowerPoint? It really helped me um, organize my lesson. It's made me, because when I do something myself, it's easier for me to study and revise. Very nice, exactly. When you do something by yourself, excellent, Habibji. Proud of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mrs. Seema. You're Thank most you. welcome, Mrs. Fafa. Yeah. So we have. I like the expression when she said, do it myself. This is very good. Exactly. This is a different way to learn. Thank you so much, Laila, Habibji. You're welcome. Thank you, Miss. Thank you, sweetie. Okay, we have the next uh, presenter who is Ahad Ahmed, and she made a presentation on the chemicals of life. The objective is to learn the structure and function of the biological molecules, which are otherwise known as the chemicals of life. And the activity is making a PPT. I'm going to present the PPT now. Ahad, would you like to explain it? Yes, yes. Uh, Assalamu alaikum everyone. Good morning. Hope you all are doing well. I'm Ahad uh, Ahmed from grade 9b and today I'm going to talk about the chemicals of life. Uh, first of all, uh, what, are, what are our bodies made of? It is made up of different kinds of chemicals and about 80% of water and the nucleic acid which is the DNA. Chemicals in our bodies are carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. Carbohydrates are made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Prote proteins are made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, sulfur, and nitrogen. Fats are made up of hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. Carbohydrates uh, are used because uh, we, they give us energy, and uh, one gram of carbohydrate releases 17 kilojoules of energy. 
uh, plants uh, plants do not transport uh, glucose around their bodies. Instead, they transport sucrose, su sucrose which is a disaccharide, and ch and changes to glucose when it's needed. Whereas in uh, animal cell, we store it in the form of glyg glycogen. There are three different types of carbohydrates, which are monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides. Monosaccharides means... Uh, Just give the examples uh, ahead. Just give the uh, examples. Okay. Um, examples of monosaccharides includes, uh, include glucose, fructose, and lactose. Disaccharides include uh, the uh, sucrose, maltose, and lactose. And the uh, polysaccharides include... Um, uh, the starch and glycogen. Thank you. Uh, when testing for starch, we use the iodine solution. And if it turns from yellow to blue black, then it means it, uh, it contains starch. If it doesn't contain starch, it will stay the same. We can also uh, test for glucose in using the Benedict's test. If the solution turns from green to yellow to orange to break red, then this means it contains glucose. If it doesn't contain glucose, it will stay blue. Proteins. Pro proteins are made up of above. Proteins are made up of amino acids, and uh, examples of proteins could be hemoglobin and uh, keratin. Mm -hmm. When testing from, for proteins, we use the BRET tests. Uh, if the solution turns from blue to violet, this means it contains protein, proteins, but if it doesn't change, this means it, uh, protein was not present. Right. Was this the same test which was presented by? Uh, uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Lipids. Uh, lipids are uh, like one glycerol atom joined with three fatty acids and uh, they're used to release energy when uh, all the carbohydrates are used up one gram of fat it releases 39 kilojoules of energy when testing for lipids we use the emulsion test and uh, we add two centimeters of ethanol to uh, uh to to the so solution and uh, shake the mixture gently. Uh, then we pour the uh, pour an equal amount of uh, distilled water to the test tube. And if the lipid is pre present, the emulsion emulsion is taking place. Yeah, it turns milky white, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. So you. Much. Thank you so much, Ahad. That was very well explained. Let's get back to our presentation. Uh, thank you so much, Ahad. As Ms. Seema said, very well presented. Thank you so much, Hibibji. Well done. Good job. Thank you so much, Mrs. Safa. Thank you. Thank you, Ahad. Very well presented. Thank you, Hibibji. Thank you. So this is the uh, last girl who is presenting today. Uh, so uh, shall we wrap up now? Mrs. Safa is busy or can we continue for three more min minutes, Mrs. Safa? And Ms. Hiba. Uh, shall I continue with Salma? Uh, Mrs. Zofa? Yes, I'm sorry, it was on a mute. Yes, give me a chance. Yes, it's up. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm fine. Thank you so much. You're most you welcome. Want, it's up to you. Okay, we have the last presenter today, which is Salma Amir. Uh, she's going to present a science activity on respiratory and circulatory system. The objective is to explain the structure and functions of respiratory and circulatory systems. Uh, the activity is making a presentation, which I'm going to present now. Salma, would you like to explain it? Yes. Give me a moment, Salma. Yeah, please start. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Today, I'm going to present you, uh, I'm going to talk about respiratory and circulatory system. 
The respiratory system. The respiratory system takes in oxygen from the air that you breathe. It also expels carbon dioxide from your body. Respiratory system. The lungs are the main structure in this system. You can see the picture of the lung mm -hmm. How do lungs work? Respiratory system. Air enters your body through a nose or mouth, moves down your throat and passes through the trachea or windpipe, then to your lungs. Here I put a picture, you can see to the, how the process. Mm -hmm. The diagram, the diaphragm lines below the lungs. You can see the diaphragm under below the lungs. The diaphragm is the muscle that uh, tightens and relaxes to make your breath in and out. Respiratory system, oxygen is, is taken into your blood and carbon dioxide leaves your body. Blood through small tubes called bronchi, and then tiny air sacs called alveoli. Now we will talk about the circulatory system. Circulatory system carries oxygen, nutrients, and waste through the body, made, made up of the heart, blood vessels, and blood. The heart is the center of this system. It pumps blood through blood vessels called arteries, the heart is called the cardio, cardio muscle. Mm -hmm. Blood moves through the arteries to capillaries. In the capillaries, oxygen and nutrients move from the blood to body cells. Blood then moves through the veins back to the heart. The circulatory system also works with the respiratory and the digestive system. Respiratory system gives oxygen and circulatory system takes the oxygen from the cell. It also works with the digestive system, breaks down nutrients in the food. You can move in. The circulatory system is also sometimes called the cardiovascular. Cardio means heart, vascular means vessels. Here, this is the exit ticket. That's what we sh I showed you in the previous previous slide. Mm -hmm. We learned about the main purpose of the respiratory system and how might your respiratory system work with your muscle system. What is the main purpose of the circulatory system and how does the circulatory system work with other body systems? Thank you so much, Salma. That was very well explained. That was very clear. Thank you. Thank you. Hope you enjoy. Have a good day. You too. Thank you so much. Yes, with this, we are coming to an end. Thank you so much uh, for all of you who are attending the science activity. Thank you so much, Mrs. Wafa. Uh, uh, sorry for interruption. I would like to thank Selma as well. Thank you so much, Selma. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Wafa. Thank you, Ms. Seema. Thank you, all girls. That was great. Thank you so much for this science activity. Have a good day. You're most welcome, Ms. Saba and Mrs. Fafa. Thank you for attending our activity. And thank you all the girls for doing such a good job and also all the mothers who are attending the science activity. A big thanks for your cooperation and support. Thank you so much.